<sighs> okay, so once again, I don't think my normal intro fits here, so we're just gonna get into it because today we have some pretty pressing matters to talk about. Namely, the alleged, the supposed friendship between Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood. Also, the comparisons that are being made about the allegations facing each of their former partners. Now, it seems like for the past month and a half, the entire world has been transfixed by the ongoing legal proceedings between Amber Heard and her ex-husband, Johnny Depp. There has been legal analysis and body language analysis and TikTok trends. Even professional psychologists are weighing in with their opinions. There really hasn't been anything like this at all to my memory. However, when something like this gets so popular and so many people are watching it, naturally some of this is going to be a lot of speculation and sometimes that speculation goes a little far afield for my taste, personally speaking. If you have watched any of the coverage, you likely already know about the viral videos that purport to show Amber Heard snorting coke on the stand or posing on purpose while crying in order to get photos and get that into the press. Now, before we go any further than this, I want to make it really clear. I have no horse in this particular race. I am neither a fan of Amber Heard's nor one of Johnny Depp's. I watched the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie when I was in elementary school, but besides that, I can't really say that I have seen much else of Depp's work. I don't think I've seen anything that Amber Heard has ever been in, and I just don't really care about the stakes of their own personal reputations in this matter. What I am concerned about though is what I am seeing as a trend as this trial goes forward, which is people declaring guilt or innocence of a person by their connection to another person, sort of the uh, transitive property of criminality, if you will. And especially over the last couple of days, I have seen more and more headlines that the people who are sort of fangirling, let's say, for Johnny Depp are now transposing their belief in the innocence of Johnny Depp on to Marilyn Manson, and they are likewise treating Evan Rachel Wood as sort of an Amber 2.0, as though these two situations are identical, which I would argue that they are not. So if you have not really seen much from my channel, if you don't really know what's going on with Marilyn Manson, let's start with a little bit of a compare and contrast. And let's start with Depp because I think more people are familiar with this story at this point. So basically, currently what is happening is he is suing his ex-wife, Amber Heard, for defamation resulting from an op-ed that she published in the Washington Post back in 2018. That op-ed did not name Johnny Depp directly, but it was widely understood to be about him. Now, after Johnny Depp originally sued Amber Heard, Johnny Depp's former legal counsel called Amber Heard's allegations a hoax, which then caused Amber to counter sue Depp also for defamation. Over the last couple of years, there has been wide speculation about the nature of the alleged abuse in that relationship, who was the main perpetrator, if it was both of them, if Johnny started it, if Amber started it, there have been videos leaked to the press. It has really, really been something of a mess in that regard. And now they are currently going through the trial and there have just been some really interesting moments. And speaking of that, I do want to mention that as far as I know, there have been no other people that have directly said that Johnny Depp has abused them. No other women have accused him of violence in their relationships, although Amber Heard has made intimations about a staircase incident involving him and Kate Moss when they were still together in the mid-90s. 
However, Kate Moss is a very private person and has neither confirmed nor denied that any kind of abuse happened in that relationship whatsoever. However, it was known to be volatile, let's say, at least according to press that came out around the time that they were still together. But going back into the actual thing we are meant to be discussing right now, let's talk about Marilyn Manson. So Manson is currently facing numerous allegations of inappropriate behavior, harassment, and abuse from over a dozen people. This does include ex-girlfriends, but it also includes co-workers and former employees as well. These stories have been corroborated so far by other people that were around at the time, musicians, assistants, and other people as well. Four of these accusers are currently in the early stages of legal proceedings against Manson in civil court, and Manson likewise has sued one of his, probably the main accuser against him, Evan Rachel Wood, for, you guessed it, defamation. And that will get to trial possibly at some point in the far future, a couple of years from now. So that is five separate lawsuits in total against Marilyn Manson. But aside from them both facing abuse allegations and also being involved in defamation trials, there are many other things that Manson and Depp have in common. Not that long ago, outlets like the Rolling Stone were publishing think pieces and articles about what was considered to be the downslope of Johnny Depp's career, comparing him to a late stage Elvis Presley or a Dorian Gray. Charismatic, but fading. Low on money, but also keeping a well-known habit of drink and drugs in litigation with his former managers and not exactly coping well with it. You might have read similar things about Marilyn Manson at the time, although Manson tended to greet press with prop gun pranks rather than renditions of folk ballads. But if you were to go on fan websites at the time, yes, of course, you could find people that were nearly religiously devoted to Marilyn Manson as an artist, but there were an increasing number of people that were starting to express their displeasure, especially with his live performances, saying that he was rude and sloppy, he oftentimes performed drunk, he seemed to not be very grateful about his fan base, and he seemed to have no energy or enthusiasm for his own work anymore. This is not exactly a far cry from the contemporaneous rumors that Johnny Depp was having trouble remembering his lines and needed to wear an earpiece while on set. And it's not just their professional lives that seem to have parallels, but their personal ones as well. They have the same shared history of drug abuse, the same love of booze, and the same career path that seemed to be on the decline after its peak in the early aughts. It is a well-known fact in Hollywood that these two are very close friends and have been for several decades. Though in recent court testimony, Depp does really seem to be working to distance himself from Manson, saying that, oh yeah, we drank together sometimes and we did cocaine together a couple of times, but, but that's really just it. In fact, stating that at one point he gave Marilyn Manson a pill in order to shut him up from talking so much. Text messages entered into evidence also seem to suggest that Marilyn Manson's assistant, Ryan, was one of Depp's drug connections. But their past together seems to go much deeper than that, at least from what we know in the public. The two met initially when Manson was working as an extra on the TV show 21 Jump Street, which would launch Johnny Depp's nascent acting career into stardom. The two would be seen together often at Johnny Depp's movie premieres throughout the 90s and the early 2000s, and this connection isn't really hard to believe when you remember that Johnny Depp originally started out as a musician and they likely bonded over music, with Johnny Depp actually playing with Marilyn Manson on stage many times over the intervening years. They are so close, they have been spotted with matching tattoos, and Marilyn Manson is the godfather of Johnny Depp's daughter, Lily Rose. 
Manson has often said in the press what a wonderful father he believes Depp to be, and Depp, for his part, has really praised Manson as a wonderful friend and also stating that he is an amazing godparent, at one point even giving an interview where he stated that Manson would play Barbie dolls with his daughter when she was younger. So it seems pretty apparent from what we have in the public record, as well as their own direct statements, that Johnny Depp and Marilyn Manson at least until really recently, were very, very close friends, despite what distance is now being created in the courtroom. I just have trouble believing that they were only ever occasional drug buddies at the most, because actually when these allegations were first coming out against Johnny Depp, Marilyn Manson had this to say to the press. I wouldn't agree with any of it if someone were to put me on the stand and ask me what I know or what I've witnessed. But despite such bold words, it doesn't appear that Marilyn Manson was either deposed or used as a witness in this case. But that doesn't mean they haven't been trying to bring his name up in court. On more than one occasion, legal representation for Amber Heard has tried to wedge in questions where they try to see if Marilyn Manson was present or not for certain events or what role he might have played in Johnny Depp's drug habit. However, they haven't really been super successful with that so far. They haven't really gotten more than really quick answers, if that. However, to me, this very much leaves the impression that they are trying to taint Johnny Depp's reputation by his association with Manson. I don't know if that's because of just who Marilyn Manson is, you know, the, oh, the shock rocker, you know, the satanic panic in the 90s, you know, all that kind of idea in the jury's heads, or if they are trying to kind of infer by proxy, hey, you know there's allegations against Marilyn Manson. If they're friends, that must mean Johnny Depp is also a bad guy. And that's sort of the point of this whole video. I am really, really against making these kind of guilt by association arguments where because you know a person, possibly, that is a bad person, that also means you are a bad person. So keep that in mind, because we're about to talk about the connection between Evan Rachel Wood and Amber Heard. The whole reason I have taken us through this overly long preamble about the connection between Johnny Depp and Marilyn Manson is so you have a very clear point of comparison of what deep public friendship looks like between two people, at least in these circles, because from what I can tell, there have always been whispers since Amber Heard came out and made accusations against Johnny Depp that Evan Rachel Wood and her were close friends. And not even just that, but best friends forever, BFFs. And that has only increased since this has gone to trial and since there has been such public focus on all of this to the point that it is really getting repeated as a fact. However, what evidence do we have that these two are close friends on the same level as Johnny Depp and Marilyn Manson? Well, the first most obvious connection is that they both dated men that happened to be friends with each other. Now, keep in mind that Evan Rachel Wood's relationship with Manson started in around 2006, 2007, and was over by mid-2010. With Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, they first met on the set of The Rum Diaries in 2009, which was a movie that they worked on together. However, they didn't start actually dating until late 2011, early 2012, until their divorce in 2016. So if they didn't become friends through a mutual friendship through their boyfriends, how else did these two come to meet? Well, the first public appearance I can find of them being together, in fact, the only public appearance I can find of them ever being photographed together was a social event for Timberland that was put on on December 10th of 2015. 
This was a dinner that was hosted by Samantha McMillan, and there were many other people in attendance, including Taylor Lautner. Now, the connection between Samantha and Amber and Evan is actually pretty clear. Samantha was working as a stylist for not just Johnny Depp, but also for Amber Heard. Samantha has also worked with Evan Rachel Wood for many years now because of the type of style she is often known for putting her clients in. In, which very much aligned with what Evan Rachel Wood wanted to wear in the public. So it was more of a professional connection. Now, there were many photos taken at this event in all sorts of combinations. People together in groups, people one-on-one -on -one with each other, and though there are many combinations of about everybody else that you could think of, there is no photo of just Evan and just Amber Heard being together. In fact, the only staged photo op photo they are in together at all is the group photo, and they are on opposite sides of the group. The picture that people often use for sort of proving these two have a friendly connection is actually, when you zoom out, them sitting together at a dining table. And I don't know, I feel like being sat together at a dining table for a professional event is not exactly proof on its own of a deep and abiding friendship. Also, keep in mind, there are tons of photos of Johnny Depp and Marilyn Manson together at public photo ops. So if they were really close friends by this point, wouldn't they try to get at least one photo together? That's at least what I would assume would be usual. Now, the next connection that people make between Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood is Evan making comments related to the press's comments on Amber's bisexuality in 2016. And for that one, I think it's better if I just quote from the article directly. Evan Rachel Wood has condemned the press coverage of Amber Heard's bisexuality. Since the news that Heard was granted a temporary restraining order against her estranged husband, Johnny Depp, has emerged, a number of news reports have discussed the 30-year-old sexuality in a pejorative manner. The 20-year-old actress, who is also openly bisexual, shared her thoughts on the matter on Twitter. Wood quoted the following tweet and added, boom, in agreement. Amber Heard's sexuality is only relevant in that bi women are at far greater risk of experiencing intimate partner violence. Bisexuality, however, is not a reason for violence. It doesn't mean Heard is somehow immoral or deserving of abuse. Wood has since deleted the tweet. Wood is also said to have retweeted a tweet which said, quote, what does Amber being bisexual and having lesbian friends have to do with anything? Fuck the media, seriously. And personally, I can see exactly how something like this would play out. Something big happens and there's tons of press coverage about it, but somehow there's also weird side commentary about one person's sexual orientation for no reason. And if you are someone that shares that orientation and you are also used to having your love life talked about and speculated on in the media, you might be compelled to comment about that. However, I will note that in neither one of these cases, neither one of those tweets that were mentioned, she did not author either of those. It was a quote tweet and a retweet. And I don't necessarily think that goes towards her directly supporting Amber Heard so much as it is about wanting to discuss the bias that is still ongoing against people that identify as being bisexual. To clarify, I am against the exploitation of her bisexuality in the media. I cannot comment on the abuse allegations. So, you're claiming she's lying? No, I said I won't comment. This is a sentiment that she repeated in an interview a few weeks later. Quote, As far as abusive situations, recently you took to Twitter to blast the media coverage surrounding Amber Heard's allegations of abuse against Johnny Depp. In particular, you took issue with the fact that Heard's bisexuality was unnecessarily highlighted in several articles. 
Wood. I can't comment on the case or any of the allegations of abuse, but as a bisexual, I do think it's a problem when we exploit that and group it in with some category of deviant, shady behavior. I think it's a really shitty way to do journalism, and I do take offense. It's done just to get a headline, while at the same time holding back a very large group of people that already have so much to overcome. It's just one more dig. So that's an issue that's close to my heart. She doesn't mention her directly in any of her responses, and one makes it really clear she is not commenting on any allegations of abuse, and two, what she is focused on is the demonization in the media of bisexuality. I think that is a pretty far cry from Manson saying he would get on the stand to defend Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp telling stories about Manson being a wonderful godparent. But that is just my interpretation. From what I can tell, there are two articles that came out around this time which both seem to say that Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood are best friends or very close friends. And I think this is where this might have started. People uncritically reading articles based on tweets and going, oh, hey, this article said they're best friends with no evidence. I'm just going to repeat that and assume it's true because Twitter means people are friends. <laughs> Listen, if everyone I quote tweeted was my best friend, I, like, I would be in trouble, okay? I would have way too many best friends. But let's get back into the subject here and let's talk about their most recent interaction, which is Amber Heard tweeting in support of Evan Rachel Wood when she made allegations that Marilyn Manson had been her abuser. She said this, and yet no one sees the trend here. Everyone wants to tag a bathroom wall, no one wants to understand the writing. Evan and I aren't the first to raise our hands. Are you done ignoring it? Tying her case in directly with Evan's statements. And I think this is interesting because yes, there is a reading of this that says this is a best friend supporting her friend as she comes out making public accusations against her longtime abuser. Or you could also interpret this as someone that already has litigation ongoing trying to tie their ship to this new hot button issue in order to raise their own profile. I'm not sure where on the spectrum this tweet falls, but I feel like it's more towards the latter because, well, Evan Rachel Wood never seemed to thank Amber Heard for her support in this tweet. And that's really everything that we have. We have one dinner hosted by a mutual professional contact, a series of deleted quote tweets and retweets, and one public statement after someone came out alleging their partner abused them. And that's really it. And I'm not saying these two couldn't still be, you know, best friends forever. But I feel like if you were in the public eye so much and you really were close friends, that you would have more to evidence that besides just, again, some tweets and one dinner. I just find that really hard to believe. I mean, it could be that they're both more private people. Evan Rachel Wood, for her part, has not really been on any social platform besides Instagram for the better part of a year now. So, you know, I guess it's not totally impossible they have some kind of connection. But remember, Amber Heard is in the middle of a defamation trial, and her case greatly details and in fact relies on the connection she has with her friends. Amber Heard confiding in her friends, her friends seeing the abuse happen, seeing the aftermath directly, being there to support her and talk to the police and take her to medical personnel maybe, or even just texting back and forth about what's going on with Johnny in that moment, going to events together, them doing drugs together, the whole nine yards, all of those connections of any degree are being brought up in this trial. However, despite the fact 
there are what is seemingly millions of text messages being entered into evidence and there are depositions and statements and emails and pictures and everything of the sort being brought up in this case, not a one of them makes a mention of Evan Rachel Wood. And if the theory of their connection is that, oh, well, they both accused their partners of being abusive, so they would have talked about that, they would have confided in each other about that, that's where their connection is, how would that not come up in court at all? Because seemingly, according to the court case, based on the evidence we have as of right now on May 18th, they just don't have any connection. And keep in mind, they are trying really hard to make Marilyn Manson a thing in this case. They want to bring up Marilyn Manson to defame Johnny Depp's character to the jury. So if they could get to that, if they could open the door to that with a connection through Evan Rachel Wood, wouldn't they do that? Again, they literally have text messages from everyone involved in this. They have text messages talking about getting drugs for Marilyn Manson's assistant. If there were texts from Evan Rachel Wood and Amber Heard going back and forth talking about their abuse situations, I feel like that would have probably been entered into court by this point. So I do just want to reiterate that I'm not completely writing off that these two could be friends, they could be talking about the trial, they could both be laughing with each other behind the scenes, but I think with what we have so far, the evidence we have is really stacked against that actually being the case. And all of this is to make one, I think, very important point. Guilt or innocence by association is a dangerous game. I know there is a temptation to look for patterns. If you believe that Johnny Depp is entirely innocent, you might then look at his friendship with Marilyn Manson and go, okay, well, if Johnny was the abused one in his relationship because they are friends, that must mean that Marilyn Manson never did anything either. To assume that they both played the same role in each one of their relationships. That if one is lying, the other must be lying. If one is telling the truth, the other must be telling the truth. And it's not that simple. You can't look at two different relationships with completely different people involved that happened at different times and then go, oh, well, because this happened here, the same thing must be happening here. That's not how this works. And I know it's scary to think of being tricked and believing the wrong person. I have my doubts too sometimes. I definitely do not go into these videos with my mind totally made up. I've said that at least three times so far already. I go into this thinking, okay, well, here's what my kind of logic is leading me to. Could I be wrong though? I know what that feeling is like to be afraid of getting something incorrect, especially as a content creator when I'm doing all this in public and there's a lot of pressure on me to get the answer right, even though I don't really think it's that simple. So yeah, the way you avoid that isn't by making unjustified comparisons between two different groups of people. It's by looking at the facts and evidence in an objective way as it is currently being presented. And I think when you evaluate it from that direction, looking at these things separately from each other, I don't think you can make the interpretation that these things are identical. That Manson is innocent just like Johnny Depp is, if you believe that. That Evan Rachel Wood is Amber Heard 2.0. Again, they are separate people. And keep in mind as well that you can be friends with someone and be deceived by them. You can believe they are an amazing person, a great friend, an amazing godparent, and believe that they are not capable of abusing others while they do that exact thing behind closed doors. 
there are always stories from people. Whenever you hear abuse allegations, you will always hear people say, oh, well, he was great to me. Oh, she was always nice to me. Oh, I never had any problems with them. Like, just because one person doesn't have a bad experience doesn't mean that no one had a bad experience, especially people that are very uh, prolific in their abuse, let's say, as weird as that is as a phrase. People that really know what they're doing know how to regulate their behavior when they are around certain people to not erase suspicions and basically have bulldogs that are going to be willing to go to bat for them. Because contrary to what is seemingly popular belief, not all abusers abuse every single person in their lives. They have a very refined way of picking out who it's going to be okay to act a certain way towards and who they need to be a little bit more buttoned up around. And this kind of misbelief, this kind of deception can lean to people that because they go, oh, well, they would never be capable of abusing someone. Therefore, I don't believe any of these allegations. Therefore, I'm not even gonna consider it to be possible. Those are the connections that abusers rely on and feed off of. And that is a very dangerous thing that people need to be aware of. And this is a really hard video to know how to end. I wrote this in like a fury at like 3 a.m. two days ago and I was like just, you know, just writing and writing and writing and writing because I've seen so much public media coverage of this case and it has been, I've definitely experienced a drastic shift in the comments that come in on my Marilyn Manson related videos. And there, again, there's all kinds of headlines coming out of people who believe Johnny Depp grafting their belief onto Marilyn Manson and treating Evan Rachel Wood now with this very skeptical opinion of like, oh, well, she's probably lying, just like Amber Heard, because I heard they were best friends. And, and there's not even like a trial yet. There's like, there, Marilyn Manson released like four pieces of evidence, I think, when he announced his defamation case, which now that I've been watching the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, and there are literally, I think, hundreds of pieces of evidence that have come out for random non-proven pieces of evidence at the back of a defamation lawsuit don't really have the same weight to them anymore, I feel like, as evidence, but I just, you know, we gotta be cautious whenever we are in situations like this where it's so tempting to be like, oh, I found a pattern, let me look at the pattern and put it over here. Like, it just, things are so much more complicated than that, and I would really encourage you guys to to embrace that complexity and be okay with not knowing who's right or wrong and be willing to believe there could be a scenario where Evan Rachel Wood and Amber Heard are just not friends and Johnny Depp is friends with Marilyn Manson and whether you believe Johnny Depp is innocent or guilty or was an abused person and also an abuser at the same time or whatever other combination, it is entirely possible he turned a blind eye to what was going on. He wasn't aware. He was kept in the dark. He thought it was all consensual. You know, who knows, right? There's a million other reasons there. So again, that is why I really want to steer people away from believing there's either connections where there's not any and then using that false idea of a connection in order to determine someone's guilt or innocence. Again, when there's not been a trial yet, there's barely even a defamation case started at this point. And then going, okay, well, if these people are friends, then that must mean that the other person they're also friends with is innocent. So it's a very interesting, strange scenario. And I haven't really seen anyone talk about this connection between Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood, other than again, the like one photo and just repeating it as fact without kind of providing any evidence of there really being a connection there or not. So I hope that you all enjoyed this, got something out of it, learned something, expanded your brain in some way, perhaps, I don't know. I am sure as time 
goes on, I am going to make more videos like this. I have been covering the allegations against Marilyn Manson since they first came out in February of last year, and I am going to keep doing that for as long as information needs to be covered. So if you are curious about this, if you want to learn more and stay more up to date, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of subjects, relationships, asexuality, BDSM, kink, criminal investigations and allegations of abuse because I care very deeply about all of these issues. I would also love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below in a comment. Have you been following the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial? Where is your brain currently at on that? Have you noticed a shift like I have in the dialogue around Evan Rachel Wood as a result of the trial or not? Again, I would just love to know any of your thoughts, any of your opinions in a comment down below. I do think think I will be doing maybe like maybe close to when the trial is over after the trial is over maybe doing like a retrospective of like all the times Marilyn Manson came up and what that was about and what we have evidence for I don't know I would like to talk about it maybe one more time because we do have a little bit over a week left at this point of trial so who knows what is going to be said at this point but yeah again thank you guys so much for watching this I know this is a heavy topic so please take care of yourselves, do what you need to do, especially if you are a survivor, if you have been a victim of something like this. I know right now reading the news can be really, really difficult and disheartening. So make sure you're taking the time and space for yourself when you are engaging in content like this. And one last very final thing, I do need to plug the thing that keeps the lights on. So if you want to support what I do, the best you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you all do support over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. Keep yourself safe, and I will talk to you all again very soon.